back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Sunless Skies or let's play last time, we are on our way to Sunspur, we finished the cat lady's cat quest and now she is part of our crew if a little bit more rambunctious. What's scavenging with the dawn rats? Oh yeah we have a chance to get fuel or supplies, fuel I guess probably, although I think supplies would have been more worthwhile but we were lower on fuel. We need to go deal with the steward's sanctum. We brought just tons of hours. I brought 12 with me, so four events of this. Down here, the sun's innards are bared. An engine that beats like a heart, pipes and wires crisscross in ways that defy perspective. Cogs turn in both directions at once. You begin to develop a headache. The steward is sitting in a meditative silence, a cup of cold tea on the table beside her. She stands to greet you, slow and careful. Did she always have crow feet? Crow's feet at the corners of her eyes? Here's some hours. Still not enough, she mutters, counting coins in your palm. But a start. She must still have access to funding, though you can't imagine from where. The Empire can't approve of her unsanctioned meddling with their crowning achievement. More hours. Still not enough. Another 400 sovereigns. But I still have more hours. Still not enough. Still not enough. We have four desperate measures now. Something is wrong. A smile twitches on the steward's face. She's cut herself on her teeth. Her chin is streaked with blood. I wasted half my life down here, she says. Last night I finally gave up. The sun could not be fixed. I decided Albion would not survive, but in my lowest moment sunlight filled my mind. I knew my error. How could I have hoped to fix perfection? A sun cannot die. A god cannot break. There is no such thing as dusk. You notice the densely packed scroll on the walls behind her, two words repeated thousands of times, often misspelled, eventually running into a single garbled stream. Similarly, the similarly dazed steward smiles a little too brightly. Care to join me in a hymn? We got one searing enigma. The steward abandons her toolbox and heads for the stairs. Engineers greet her joyfully, but a cold silence settles when she begins sermonizing. The sun cannot break, she insists. It breaks near twice a week these days, a shouts a burly engineer. What are you talking about? Neither your work nor mine is needed any longer, she replies, turning her head back down to the vaults. The engineer's outraged whispers become a clamor. Rally them. They need someone to step in, but the steward is gone. The chaos dies down. Your voice cuts through the tumult like a klaxon through fog. They're engineers, aren't they? They can figure it out. The sun sustains an empire. Its maintenance can't have relied on the steward alone. The engineers make uneasy glances. She taught us all she could, one of them pipes up, but none of it made sense. The sun's not like any other machine. First principles need to be reinvented from the ground up just to... A colleague interrupts. We'll just have to make it work. In the distance, a cog grinds to a halt. Dejected but no longer arguing, the engineers rush to deal with it. Oh dear, that is not good. Let's head towards Azimuth. There was something in there, wasn't there? Yes. We need to go to the shattered... The sun shattered dome. We got a new state of suit quality. We've done all this before. But let's attempt to navigate the bad patch. We've actually got better stats this time, so we might be able to do it a little bit easier. We gained a roll of Thirsty Bombazine and two Terror. We did this one before. Um. Oh, we could just search elsewhere. Okay, let's try that. Um. Uh, okay, well. Oh, we only got a partial success that time. That's bad. Bombazine or crew member. We'll take the Bombazine. Sorry, crew member. We can always recruit more crew. Our suit is decaying. I think... Oh, oh, this is bad. Veils is not a good thing. Let's try and search elsewhere. Return to... Oh, no. Let's explore the Shalimar. A light has deprived these plants. Depraved these plants, I should say. The dazzling sequencer warned you away from here. Partial success again. Crew? Oh, I see. Acid roses, predatory daffodils, snappy tulips with lamprey mouths, specimens imported decades ago from old London, the kind of common flowers that might be found at a street florist's but bone white and deadly. Your crew hacks to them all, leaving a swath of slaughtered jungle in your wake. After much sweat and panic, you come upon one of the Shalimar's treasures, an oyster shell encrusted with diamonds. As you approach it, a thorn vine lashes out from the undergrowth and twines around your arm. Crew, help me! We're gonna lose another crew, aren't we? Yep. It's time to leave? Actually, how's our suit doing? Suddenly it seeps onto our skin. We need to leave. Return to safety. We 
completed our charitable mission, you successfully delivered the manual to Brabazon, no doubt transforming some 600 lives for the better. Now they need some bow ties. The sequencer claps his hands together, I can just imagine their smiles, he says, and oh, their wide, grateful eyes, and their misshapen bow ties, crying out for correction. He sends his orderlies to fetch your payment, there's a glint in his eyes. I knew I was right about you. The sequence brought us together for a reason. We just sent another pass package. <laughs> Let's suggest an alternate gift. Maybe send them food or medicine, or- okay, I should read this. Another crate is dropped off at the sequencer's feet by his shuffling orderlies. Here we have a collection of antique but very much functional pistols, he says brightly. I was thinking we could send them to the, well, the London Refuge for the Lamentably Parentless. I'm sure the little mice will enjoy the thrill of the hunt. I mean, he's sending guns, why not? Maybe they could use some guns to London. Okay, Azimuth, we're done here. Let's go towards the glass house. I don't think there's anything in here that we need. Sure, let's listen to the prisoners. They scream or sing, you might not get anything from them, but we got two tales of terror. Alright, let's get out of here. We are free and clear. We have, I think, mostly finished this place. Let's just take a quick look at the Trepsichore Vault. How's the steward holding up? She's not doing well. Okay, let's leave. Um, the sun may collapse at some point. We're gonna go back to London. We're done at the... I guess we're done here. So we need to go to London. Actually, I need to go to Parliament first. I need to drop off one more bronze wood to finish that stupid commission that we took a while back. So I'm gonna hit bar Parliament and then go to London. And then we're gonna talk with probably our um, new signaler because we haven't started his quest yet. We'll see what he has for us to do. I'm sure it'll be something exciting. We'll be back shortly once we reach London, and we'll start everything at that point. This isn't the end of the video, obviously, because this is just sort of the beginning of the video. Um, but we're just going to do a quick travel, and then we'll re-begin in London. Welcome back, everyone. We have arrived in London. You might have noticed there has been a little bit, or a considerable bit, of audio quality difference between the first half of this video, first half-ish of this video, and the second half-ish of this video. The reason for this, quite simply, is my microphone gave up on life yet again. I did get my new cords in, so I determined that it is now not a problem with the cords. It is actually a problem where the mic, uh, where the cords connect into the microphone. So in the back of the microphone, there is a mini H HDMI slot, and you're supposed to plug it in there. It looks like it's sunken in, or something along those lines. We are going to have to ship the microphone in for repairs, unfortunately. So. We are stuck with the headset microphone for the time being. Hopefully that's not a big deal because this gaming channel is largely about gaming and not about voice acting, so everything should be fine. I hope you guys will bear with me while we figure out what to do about this poor little microphone problem. Anyways, we're going to get started. The only reason we came to London in the first place was specifically to grab this little guy, the Retronaut. He is our new little... I don't really know what to describe him as. Scout, I guess? He's kind of... yeah, let's call him a scout. So we're gonna go to the hold, and we are gonna dump our Retronaut where that bat was. Except I can't for some reason. I have to take it off first. For some reason I do. Alright, so the diffident bat is gone. It hasn't been much, well, it has been quite a bit of help to us, but we have turned it away. I also realized that we have the option of continuing our main story, and I know that we were working on some other things. Uh, specifically, we did the Clockwork Sun quest, in that they required some hours to fix up the sun. Instead, we drove her insane, and now she doesn't want to fix the sun at all because she believes that the sun is perfect and can never go wrong. She is, of course, wrong on this account, and the sun is wrong, and literally turning things to glass. It is a abomination, an abomination, I should say, against the natural order of the cosmos. But then again, if there wasn't a clockwork sun here, there wouldn't be a sun at all, because this sun was blown up. We're headed straight towards the relay. We're going to jump back into the Reach, and we're going to head back to New Winchester. And the reason we're going back there is to do our main storyline quest. So to do it at this point, we needed two... Uh, moments of inspiration, which we have. We also needed two... 
Savage Secrets, I believe? Something along those lines. And I think we have those as well. So, we're nearing the relay, we'll jump through, and then we're going to head over to New Winchester. And from there, we'll continue on our way. I may quickly just adjust the volume of this microphone a little bit. It's... actually, you know what? It's fine. It's sitting at... with compression kicking in around negative 5 decibels. So, that's perfectly fine. It's not redlining by any stretch. Um, it is compressing before it hits the red line. So, you know what? It's fine. Everything is A-OK. -okay. We'll call it good enough for now. I know one day that we will hopefully want to get our better compressor microphone in again. But you know what? This headset isn't so bad. I was actually looking into getting like a really good headset microphone, like the Audio-Technica BPHS-1, something like that. It's some sort of acronym that I'm not familiar with anyways. But then I would also need to get some sort of um, tuner box type thing. And that just sounds like a lot of work. Although, if anyone has experience with those kind of microphones, those headset microphones that require... There's a name for it, and I can't remember what it is. A tuner box, almost called an equalizer or something like that. Um, let me know, because I'm kind of curious to see if there's... how they compare to an actual... real compressor cartridge microphone, so let me know. We're going to use hours to get back to the reach. Gain a tiny bit of terror. We're untroubled at 41%. Should be fine. I still am of the firm opinion that those rickety portal machines are not something I would ever use to travel long distances. Especially since they're glowing with correspondence writing, which is in some sort of eldritch language called the correspondence, but definitely not something that I'd want to put my faith in. We have tons of fuel and supplies, so we're definitely good on that account. Uh, we don't need to stop in Port Prosper. We still have a port report from last time we were there. We still have a settler from last time we were there, actually. We have a person that wants to go to Leadbeater and Stainrod Nature Reserve way in the south. We haven't been there for ages. We've had no real no need to go down there, though. Hybris... or not Hybris. Um, Titania is all upgraded. Port Prosper... or not Port Prosper, jeez. Stainrod and Leadbeaters is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong going on there. There's no more research. Well, we can turn in some research for money, but we really don't need to. We have quite a bit of cash, and we could have more if I sold things, but we've been stockpiling hours and glass and nectar, all sorts of junk. We also could get a ton of money from selling um, Salon Street Gossip. We have no Vision of Heavens anymore, though, by the way. I spent it all on moments of inspiration. Uh, if you go to... Where was that? Shoot, I can't remember now. Um, there was a place where I could turn... I think it was a Hermit Shack. No, it wasn't a Hermit. It was a Crossroads. The Crossroads in Eleutheria, I believe, you can turn five Visions of Heaven into one secret. Or not secret, um, moment of inspiration. Something along those lines. Pretty sure it was there. So yeah, I did that twice, which was ten... Um, Vision of Heavens, which was all of our Vision of Heavens, or two Moments of Inspiration. The reason we needed those Moments of Inspiration are for our main quest, though. I really hope we don't need Visions of Heaven to do our main quest. I'm pretty sure we don't. But if we do, I kind of screwed myself a little bit. We'll find out very shortly, because it's dead ahead. The reason I'm perhaps talking more than I usually am is I'm trying to get a good gauge on microphone levels of talking. I did some testing, of course, because it would be silly not to test microphones before using them, so I know generally what I'm getting into, but uh, when I vary my tone and pitch, just to see how it uh, picks up on the video recording program I'm using. It seems to be doing okay for now, sort of sitting stable. There's a homestead here. We should get to reduce our terror. Is it just me or is the fungus growing here? We're quite far away from Hybris. If the fungus is spreading, that's a bad thing. But regardless, we're almost home. Which is weird that I still call New Winchester home even though... Realistically, we've grown past it. 
New Winchester is a small city. It's certainly not a metropolis like London. It's not even probably as big as Penn, to be honest. What it is, is the first place we started. We, we began our journey here, and this is also where we'll end our journey. I'm not sure if we're ending it right now. If we are, that would kind of suck, but at the same time I wouldn't be too um, upset. The reason is we could take a quick break from some of the skies and then do the second and what I think will be the cooler of the... Well, okay, third of, or cooler of the uh, goals for your character to obtain. Wealth is a boring one. Everyone can do wealth. We probably could have retired with wealth a long time ago. Actually, maybe wealth would be interesting. Maybe they added some cool stuff to it, but we'll see. What I really want to know is the fate of the stars, so that's kind of what I would want to see. 400. I'm just stopping off to get some money. We had some port reports. And I often forget to turn them in, so... Just want to make sure we get our sweet, cold, hard cash. How much money do we have? We've spent a lot recently. We do have this shotgun, which is sort of okay. It does this. It takes so much heat, though. Like, I think we have 100 heat. I'm pretty sure that's what our ship is limited to. And this generates 60 when you shoot it, so you are well over half the first time you fire, and you're nearly, if you wait a couple seconds, you are still nearly redlined the moment you fire again. It fuses over half of your heat, so you have to be kind of careful. It does a lot of damage, but it's still not exactly what I was hoping for. Oh good, we need to unlicensed charts. Perfect. We put the success of the four cantos out of our mind. The fifth must exceed them all, somehow. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Bloop. A horde of fanatical readers await your words with rabid anticipation. The song isn't yours anymore, it's theirs. You're just the unlucky shepherd who must steer it to the right ending. If you fail, they'll skin you alive and write a better conclusion in your blood. Best get on with it, then. You sit to write and find that the words come easily. Like friends who have been waiting at the door, you invite them onto the page. As you write, words come unbidden, until you realize you're about to launch into an anecdote that could destroy some formidable reputations. The words squirm in your head, anxious to make it to the page. You must make a decision. Are you going to speak the secrets you've learned, even those that anger the powerful? Or will you keep silent? Damn the consequences. You name names and reveal conspiracies. You hint at grander, darker mysteries than even you barely comprehend. The omnivorous publisher would be happy. Revealing all these secrets may come back to bite you, but it's certainly going to generate attention. The tale has grown in the telling, and grown and grown in its vastness. It has become impossible to control. You find yourself searching through previous cantos to ensure consistency of character and detail, stumbling unexpectedly upon narrative dead ends. Writing yourself into terrible tangles that cannot be salvaged. With the grim determination of Hercules facing the Hydra, you cut and cut until the story lies bleeding but better at your feet. The fifth canto is complete. You find the omnivorous publisher at his paper drowned desk, flanked by two large gentlemen with shoulders as wide as anvils and guns at their hips. Protection, explains the publisher, tossing back a glass of whiskey. Some of your readers are rather fanatical. He briefly skims your manuscript before handing it to an assistant. The printing presses roar like Unleashed dragons, the publisher toasts you, then dismisses you with a wave of his cigar. The fifth canto's publication follows much the same pattern as the fourth, an exhausting rush of book signings, interviews, and speeches. At some event or another, you can't remember which, the omnivorous publisher appears suddenly at your side, breathing smoke into your face, and pressing a whiskey into your hands. You're too big for New Winchester now, he tells you, snatching up a pressing a passing canape. I've established a new office in London. Meet you there. He swallows the canape whole and vanishes as quickly as he came, leaving nothing but an acrid smell and a trail of crumbs. Well, I guess we have grown too big for London, and this isn't where our tale will end. Interesting. Let's take a quick look at our journal and see what we're going to do in our next video. That's probably what we should do. We should make some sort of plan for our next one. We have lots of things to do still. We're still involved in a rental dispute. We haven't fixed that yet. Uh, we are still a agent of an agent, sorry, of the Royal Horological Office. We're an initiate of the displease. We haven't done that yet. We have to progress out of an uprising in the Brabazon work world. There's an election at Parliament. We need to go. Oh, we need to go to Lustrum, right? Let's go do that. 
else can we do? We need to help the brittle servitor escape from Piranesi. We're getting there anyways. We haven't quite finished all of the penitent jobs yet. I wonder if we can. Do we have flickering on our soul yet? I wonder. Let me check that. Let's see. It's gotta be here somewhere, right? Uh, your train, that doesn't help me. We have a lot of villainy, damn. Oh, that's Tales of Terror. Right, okay, we have a lot of Tales of Terror. We even have one captivating treasure. Oh, goodness, it's called. Um. Apparently, we have nothing at the mausoleum. Do I find out about my soul? You would think it would be here somewhere. Maybe it's in our profile. Ah, oh, this could be it. Our soul. Flicker. It does have flickering now. Excellent. Let's go to Carillon and Lustrum. Uh, Carillon is pretty close, so we'll just fly there right now. We have lots of fuel and supplies for the moment. Enough to get us to Lustrum. Or not Lustrum. Carillon, Lustrum, and then back as well. Also, I think we can buy supplies and or fuel in Carillon. Maybe it's just supplies? Pretty sure it's just supplies. We'll see, though. I know we only have seven or so minutes left, but we can try and do the flickering thing. Unfortunately, if it needs veils, we might be in a bit of trouble. We'll gain a ton of terror in our attempt to complete that. I wonder if we can get one of each into the Devilus's big thing. I wonder if it'll cleanse our entire soul. And then we can do some of those cleansed soul things that we need to do. Like, we need a clean soul to go to Catechus. We also need a clean soul to broker the deal, I'm pretty sure, with the apes. Um, what else do we need a clean soul for? I remember there's another thing that we needed a clean soul for, but it's evading my mind at the moment. The one thing I will say about the headset microphone, as opposed to the normal microphone, is I can move my head around and just talk like normal, without worrying about how my voice will become distorted or how it will fade out based on where the microphone is in relation to it. Luckily, the microphone just doesn't move. It stays right here, right up against my mouth-ish area, and that makes it kind of convenient at the very least. There is a cantankery just destroying that dreadnought by slamming it into the rocks over and over again. Although, I think that does damage the Cantankery, and it will die smashing itself to death literally on the hull of the Dreadnought, so... It's not really a David versus Goliath story so much. And we're very close to level 20, look at that, we're so so close. I'm actually gonna pause the video for just one sec, I have to cough. Pretty horribly. I have a bit of a cold, I'm still getting over. Okay, we are back. I have coughed, I have had sips, sips of water, and we are in... Carillon. Grab the port report. Uh, we're not gonna speak with the devil S. Actually, what do we need from... Hang on. Let's take a look. Don't care. I need... I have one ordeal. I need an inescapable truth. I need an indulgence. I need an excess. I have an enlightenment, I have an endurance, I have a deprivation, and I have a shift in perspective. So I need excess, indulgence, and inescapable truth. I can purchase an indulgence? Huh. Anyways, let's. we might purchase an indulgence, which would be kind of annoying, but we'll figure that out in a moment. No, I didn't... Uh, Back to the center. Let's go. To Krillin Center. There we go. Alright, let's go to... Traveling around. Oh, we still can't get excess. We don't have stained. We do have flickering. We had flickering before. What did we need again? Did an indulgence... An excess? Excess is this one. Indulgence, I think we have to buy. It's the last one. We might as well get the other one while we're here, and then we'll go to Lustrum. We'll come back with a soul. To buy an indulgence. Uh, we needed... Indulgent? Yeah, we got that one. Inescapable Truth. Okay, let's go pick that up. We still don't have Stained, and I don't know how to do that one. 
We're gonna have to figure that out. I'll have to Google it or something. We haven't seen anything that gives us a stained soul for literally the entire game, so I don't know what to do about that. Let's go get ourselves. The only thing we need here then went to the wrong place. Just one of those days. An inescapable truth. Okay, we need to go to this one. Okay. It needs mirrors. We're probably going to get some terror here, in all honesty. Ugh. We have 55% chance and we're failing. Yay, there we go. Okay, we have that. Now we need the indulgence. So we need a soul for that. And we need... To figure out how to get stained. But in the meantime... We can quickly go to Lustrum and go see about becoming an MP. I would love to become a member of Parliament. Why not? We deserve a chance to rule a useless organization that was cast out by the Empress. And by the Empress, I mean Queen. As far as I know, she hasn't ascended to... Well, it's actually called the Empire, so very real... Okay, so interesting little tidbit. She is an Empress because she rules an Empire. She no longer rules a Kingdom. Kings and queens rule kingdoms. When you start calling your land an empire, you are an emperor or an empress. So, that's just what you are. Much like if you are a baron, you rule a barony. Stuff like that. So yeah, she is an empress. Empress Victoria. She's not technically Queen Victoria. I'm going to go stop off at this. Wait, hang on. We were going to talk to our dude. We were going to do a quest for him. Let's trade tales of terror over tea and biscuits. He is reticent by nature, but can be coaxed into conversation over depressing stories with horrible endings. Soon you are engaged in dismal competition. You raise the sad fate of Parliament and the tragic disappearance of the HML Parzifal. He, he counters with a story of his own past. I worked on the Isambard line. It was meant to ring the whole reach, a chain of accelerators and hour funnels to speed locomotives between the outer ports. Doomed from the start it was. Some said it was cursed. But I reckon building a road around the sky was just bloody difficult. It were never finished. He slurps his tea. I'd like to talk, take a proper tour of the reach, see exactly how stupid we were. He wants to go on a... Oh, he wants to reach... Six port reports. So we need to get six port reports for him. Okay, well we have one. We can get one from Lustrum. I wonder if we can just... Mess with this. What is here? Let's read the ledger. We might as well get something out of it. Two sky stories. We are not taking anything out of the cache, I think it's called. And so we head off to Lustrum instead. I know that this is closing in on the end of our video time, but I want to see what is required for us to become an MP. That's attack the ship, and they are going to be really mad at us for being here. Luckily, our new gun is actually really good, to be fair. At close range, it does a lot of damage. That being said, if you find yourself in close range with a lot of things at the end of the game, it's really bad because they have lots of close combat stuff that deals just ludicrous amounts of damage to your ship. We're going to stop off and grab the where the heart is. Kind of just go there. We can mourn the dead. Yeah, our veils kind of sucks, and we have relatively high terror. That's bad news, because those things are terrifying. We need to close in with it and get around it, actually. Shit, I went the wrong way. Turn hard! We need a good solid broad. Oh, that's a bad place to be. Hitting it with very small amounts of them. It needs to turn and take like a full broadside. That was much better. And... Oh, you stupid cantankery! You screwed up my shot! Okay, we're gonna try and get rid of our heat. Oh, we're gonna take a shot right in the face because of it. Yep. Jesus, this thing won't die. Ugh. 
There we go. Finally. I can't take where he screwed up my attacks. Now we have to use some of it for hull. Taking your chest apart so I can get some sovereigns back. You ruined my fight. I should just, yeah, let's turn around really quickly. It's always good to mine for hours. They're worth eighty dollars if nothing else. I think. Seventy. <laughs> I just clipped the ship. Whoops. That's okay. Everything is fine. No big deal. Everything is a okay. And now we can go to Luster. Yes, this video will be a teensy bit longer than some of the other ones. Actually, you know what? I don't think it will be. I think we're pretty okay on time. Maybe a little bit over, but we're gonna call it pretty good. I always get the weirdest existential crisis in this exact area. This part here is the part that I have the most trouble with. I've faced off against energy beings, and I've seen a clockwork sun, and I've seen weird things, and like a giant eye beneath me in that one misty area. But this just endless dark below me is creepy. I don't know why. This would give me terror. I could deal with the Clockwork Sun. I would think it would be amazing. I wouldn't get any terror out of that. What I would get terror from is that. Just this endless void below. Oof. I'd be the worst space person. I would need to be on like a Starfleet ship and not like a expanse ship. Alright. Um, how do I decide to become MP? Ah, there we go. Stand for Parliament. First of all, Port Report, though, we need that. Let's stand for Parliament in Lustrum. The prospectors here like their representatives cagey and careful. At least a few of the people bother going to the polls. The votes are in, a toothless prospector stamps his foot as the numbers are read out. With barely any more support, Mussolini Purgatroyd flounces off to invent something capable of properly expressing her annoyance, though it turns out to be some kind of automatic tea-stirrer. You wait for your name to be called out. Sure enough, the people choose well. To a smattering of applause from the handful of the public who bother to show up and vote, you rise from your chair and take your destiny. Let's accept our new role with grace. Congratulate your defeated opponents. Take on your new role with the dignity that it demands. Presenting the honorable member. You've done a lot. Time to prepare for government. Begin your career at the floating parliament. We are now a parliamentarian. Cool. We also got level 20. This is it. The last level we have. We can go with irons. Get irons 5. That puts us at 84. But if we lose our irons, person would be at 60 or 74, which is not enough to use any level 75 iron stuff, which is unfortunate. Okay, so we can't do that. If I were to go hearts and mirrors, this would put me up to... We don't have any mirrors primary ones, so we're going to have to do hearts and something else no matter what. So hearts and mirrors would put us at 57 hearts. And then it would put us at 82 veils. If we lost 6 veils from the, or 6 mirrors from that one character and found a hearts person to take it, that would put us up at 69 hearts and 72 veils? No, that's not right. 76 veils. Oh man. That sucks. Okay, the apple did not fall far from the tree. The way you turned out came as little surprise to those around you. Cast from a mold, they said, but which of your family's qualities do you... Actually, let's go metamorphosis. Uh, nope. Uh, thief oath. oath. Eh. They say there's no honor among thieves. They are wrong. In a lightless cellar, you and your, closed, or your closest collaborators spoke a solemn promise that was invented in the dark. You mingled your blood. What did you swear? 
of silent. Oh, this is irons. We can't do irons primary. That'll screw us up. Um, I guess we're gonna go piano. No, we'll just go with the family footsteps. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. The way he turned out came as a little surprise to anyone. Cast from a mold, they said. But what's your family's traits? Do you embody? We embody their virtues. Some inherit wealth. You inherited character. Good breeding, people said. Well, perhaps. But you've always been a keen observer and learned quickly. That's it. That's actually all of our levels. We can't level up anymore. That's as far as it goes. We are level 20. That's a character point one. It says I have character points one. Maybe it just hasn't updated. Oh wait, no, it says we have one. Yes, Bear, I hear you, buddy. What are you barking at? Or whining about, whatever. Anyways, we're a member of parliament. I'm gonna figure out this character point thing. We're going to end off our video here, though. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video. We are going to head to... Well, we're going to figure out how to get Stained on our souls so we can finish the Kirill and stuff. I am also going to figure out... Um, well, we're going to go grab some souls from the bank and bring them back over. So hopefully we can just do all of that. And then... We're going to grab port reports. That's boring. I'll just grab them between videos. And then from there we can do whatever's next on the Signaler's Quest. Take care, everyone. See you next time.